It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. I am going to sub. Now I'm going to take my clothes off. Do oh, it. The subbing works. Oh, give us your best. I'm a top. I'm a top. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. I'm a top. More conviction. I'm really a top. I believe it. <laughs> Roll the opening. Hello! Welcome back to What's Safe Word. I'm Amp. I'm Miss Christopher. And today... I'm a dom. No, it's I'm a top. No, I'm a dom. No, literally. I'm dom, dom, dom. Don't call yourself dom. <laughs> You're so smart! You get a beat, so, boy! You would never. <laughs> You guys all really enjoyed the Ask Us Up Anything episode, and as it was a test run for a new series of Ask a Blank Anything, the next line of questioning really just goes to Dom, I think. And I think we really missed an opportunity there because we were not dressed as subs for Ask the Sub. You wanted to put on the hat then! I, I, I didn't, I I didn't, didn't dress fully you. understand what we were doing, as usual. <laughs> but today, Daddy knows exactly what we're doing because I actually let him choose the questions. That I were know. Asked today. And, and there were so many good questions on Twitter. So let's just get right into it. All right. A dom is someone in the sexual relationship that takes control and is usually the top. Not always. Yes, Accurate. Daddy. In fact, I actually have a question to start us out today because it's something that we get asked a lot and didn't happen in this thread, but what's the difference between dom and dom? Dom is in France. And they added the, the extra M and the E on the end to differentiate between a, a male and a female. But also, apparently, it was just kind of this slang term that they added at the end to make it more like high end and sound French, but Ooh. also originated in chat rooms, so. Is that factors or something you just came up with? No, I, I researched it. Fascinating. First question, which comes from Howl It Unleashed, and it asks, what do you enjoy the most about doming? For me, I love it when I've got a sub on their knees and when they look up at you with those eyes that are totally submissive. Oh. <laughs> and it's just, it's a beautiful thing just to have that kind of power and control over someone's psyche and mental attitude. <laughs> it puts me into Dom Bliss. Paint me like one of your French doms. <laughs> so hot. See, where's the trust? See, the sub has to trust that I'm not going to hurt the, not by <laughs> Ow! ow. <laughs> <laughs> For me, when I dom, because sometimes I am a top, I really just like building a dynamic with someone. I like that they're able to trust me and I'm able to trust them to just, you know, make sure I take care of them as we go through whatever scene or fantasy that we build together. And it's the BDSM trust, it's that dynamic that makes it so powerful. And just so rewarding. Good question. I feel like we should give positive reinforcement to the questions. As a dom, it's good to give like, you know, that good aftercare. So. Okay, bend over. No, 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 not, not to me, get the oh, howlet, the howlet. Oh. Good job, howlet. And then there was a few questions that actually had to do with like protocols and how we move forward from maybe the older guard. In fact, Pup Tracker asks, which do you think is better, old guard or new guard? So, and this is where we've been talking, we even have a merch line. I prefer a kind of a variation of old guard, which is embracing the new generation that's coming up and all the issues that are affecting them, but also keeping some of those protocols and some of those manners, because a lot of the protocols that were built were about manners and respect and how to treat your dog. And a lot of it came from the old militaristic styles, from the, the gay men being ousted out of the military and just kind of taking what they learned in the military that they enjoyed and was good and provided order and bringing it over into the kink scene. Sir, yes sir. So a lot of the old guard, they created this tradition and a set of rules these dynamics had to have. Some of them being, you can't buy your own leather, it has to be handed down to you. A lot of protocols around a mirror cap. I think some of those don't hold up to today's standards and how we are, especially when it comes to gender fluidity. And I think the old guard is gonna get left behind if they don't evolve. That's why I like to consider myself guard classic. And with that, like we also, I say we as like the newer generation of people need to have that conversation to be able to listen to old guard or guard classic, however someone identifies, because if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat yourself. And there's a lot within our history that if we're not talking about it, epidemics, gender and identity and how that's been handled, like we continue to fall into those pitfalls. And so the next question actually comes 
coming from Dior Knight asking about like, what our opinion on leather protocols and other manuals that exist kind of goes hand in hand with that because I have a bunch of like recommended reading for any tops that I recommend. Because reading is what? Fundamental. Which includes the, the new book of Topping by Dossie Easton and Janet W. Hardy, if you guys know The Ethical Slut. But it also includes Urban Aboriginals, which is an older kind of protocol -y book, Leather Sex, and Ties That Bind, which are the last three are actually older versions of kind of kink and leather sex sorts of journals and books that really offer you a great perspective. But Daddy, do you have any book recommendations? The books that I grew up with when I was your age was... Why did you have those friends? The Leatherman's Handbook by Larry Townsend. This has a lot of old guard protocol in it that I don't know if stands up today. Uh, and Leather Folk, which was by Mark Thompson, which was a really good read at the time as well. Take what works for you. Everyone's dynamic is gonna be different. Good question, good question. Good question, Pup Tracker. You get points. Good boy points. You too. See, where's the trust? It's not you have the to trust. trust. It's not it's, trust. It's not the trust. trust. It's the depth perception. Okay. I'm, it's the I'm it's, very you just aware said you of can't where. See things. No, no, that was that was a joke. I totally <laughs> see no, things. No, no, I no. see things. No, no, all no, the no, time. no, no. The next question from Mr. Yours starts out: uh, Do you validate and have free parking for visiting subs? <laughs> I don't even have free parking for myself. No, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It actually goes on to then ask, for real though, would you rather a sub outright ask you if they could play with you, or do you prefer to make the first move in inviting a sub to play? I, and this will be going back to old guard protocol. Old guard players are gonna say they want to make that first move. I prefer the sub to make the first move because I don't want to waste my time going to someone who's not interested. I'm, I'm like, if you're interested, come up to me, show me respectfully that you're interested. Don't ever come up to me and say, you need to do oh something God. to me because that the will not end well. <laughs> you do need to You need like to this. be quiet. <laughs> And I kind of share that same sentiment. I like when there's enthusiasm behind someone that wants to sub. And it also kind of goes along the way that my love languages work and how my just talking to someone works. When I see someone's excited, whether it's visually, you know, or not, it just makes it more fun for me and more engaging for me. And I just, it makes me all like warm and fuzzy. But also be prepared that the Dom may not be in the headspace or have the time to play with you right now. So sometimes it's all about timing. Which actually brings us to a really good follow-up question from Jade, who asks, how do you vet potential subs? Hmm. So I vet them by how respectful they are at the beginning. Okay. Then I look at what they've done in the past. And then you go into the future. Future! and what their experience level is. Okay. And I have a conversation with them, what they want, what they enjoy. And then I see if it meshes with what I want and what I enjoy. And to add on to that, if I know that they have a social media profile, while I'm not trying to be a stalker, I do wanna see what they post, how they post, and kind of get a vibe for them before I really get to know them. I think that that's a good way to kind of get a, a snapshot, you know, as it were, of, of who they might be or with the potential. Ooh, ooh, okay. Uh, let, let's role play. I'm, I am a new sub. You're a dom. Go. Get on your knees. Well, my, knee, I'm, my knees are sore though. I just did leg day. I just did, and I, I have bad knees, so. Get out. Hello, sir. Can I sub to you? What's your name? It's Power Bottom 69 420. <laughs> so do you smoke weed out of your bottom? That, I love that scene. <laughs> Forcefully? <laughs> With consent, <laughs> it'll be easy to weed me out of potential subs. Oh God. And speaking of role play, if you wanna get the perfect role play on in your bedroom, how can they do that, Daddy? With today's sponsor, Helix Sleep. Now, Daddy, what is Helix Sleep? Helix Sleep is my favorite premium mattress. Who's been a long time sponsor for the channel for over a year now, literally. We have literally been fin doming them forever. <laughs> But more importantly, because they know everyone's different, they have an amazing way in which you can buy your very own mattress online with their sleep quiz. So we could put in our heights, our weights, different sleeping positions, and firmness preferences. Helix had something that was perfect for me and Daddy in the bedroom. And we got the Dusk Lux, which Daddy now has. And Daddy, how are you enjoying it? I love my Dusk Lux. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Dusk, Dusk, Dusk Lux. Lux. Dusk, Dusk Lux. Oh. Dusk Lux. Oh, yeah. And since getting our mattresses, I've actually never had sleep 
that was this good. I had an old mattress that had some springs in it, and because Helix has springs and this lovely like cushioning sensation, they're not only the best mattress for sex, but they're just the best mattress to get a good night's sleep. And before I got this mattress, I had my other mattress for over 10 years. Plus, Helix not only ships to you very, what daddy? Quickly. And when you're ready to really let it inflate, what do you do daddy? Ooh, it's the opposite of a vacuum rack. It goes ASM, are you ready for comfort? If you've ever bought a mattress, there is that nagging sensation of like, ooh, is this the right mattress for me? I don't know if I like this. So we especially like that they have what, daddy? A hundred night sleep trial. So over three months for free that you get to try it out. And if you don't like it, you can ship it back and you get a free refund. And don't forget, Helix has a 10 year warranty. Dom's not included, but Deals definitely are, because if you go to Helix Sleep today and use offer code WATT, you get up to $200 off your mattress and two free pillows for free. And I'm not talking about the subs pillows, but they might have a few pillows too. I'm talking about their butt. Thanks for that clarification. <laughs> And we've had both of our mattresses because we both have a Helix for over a year now. My favorite part is I had honestly never slept better until I found a mattress that actually matched my sleep style. Thank, Thank you, you Helix, Helix sleep. sleep. Now on to the questions. And the next question from Coach Jingle Juice <laughs> asks, Honestly, I want a sub to coach Jingle oh, Juice. Yeah. <laughs> that's like that's like the Christmas version of water sports, Jingle Juice. <laughs> but it also sounds kind of like a Popper's brand. And they ask advice on building a relationship with other doms. Ooh, Ooh that's interesting. Because usually you were always asked like, how can as a, as a sub, okay, how can I get a dom? As a dom, how can I get a sub? But two doms interacting don't make a right. But three rights make a left. That's very interesting because doms are there's a lot of ego involved in doming with their sub, and especially if you have a collared sub to you, they get very protective when other doms eye them. So there's a little bit of a competition kind of thing that's out there between doms, especially if they're playing with multiple subs that are playing with others. But what I've found lately is friending other doms and being able to talk through different subs that we've all played with gives you a very interesting perspective and you learn new things and new techniques and new tricks sharing my business with. You're not one of the other doms. <laughs> Just see myself out. But I also think that like the question might be asking like how do you make friends with people who might be very dominant, assertive, aggressive? Like how do you how do you build that friendship? Because I think sometimes some doms can be very overbearing or or just intimidating. No, not you. You're you're a cuddly. What do you mean by that? You're a cuddly little like, you know, you're just so cute. Don't talk to me. So also what you have to remember is a lot of BDSM is role play. Mm -hmm. I could have a very gruff exterior, but I also love to share cooking recipes. I'm just imagining a bunch of doms and nothing but like a friends like, oh, oh. oh we're, we're, we're baking, we're icing the cake. It happens, the sun. trust, it happens. <laughs> Did you base the turkey or just the boy? Oh. <laughs> Don't bake your boy. I'm a little baked right now, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I could tell. Me and Power Bottom 69 420 had some fun before this. Mm -hmm. The next question from Hazel asks, what is the simplest tool in a Dom's, your toolkit, to set a scene and help the sub get into the role? That one's easy. Blindfold. Oh. Blindfolds are the easiest way to get a sub into sub space because you take out all their visual distractions of what's going on in the room and they're focused on your voice. Then they're focused on your smell. And then they're focused on what you're doing to their <coughs> body. <laughs> <laughs> See how focused you are? Are I'm, you in I'm, subspace yet? I'm, I'm, are you in? Oh <laughs> you're feeling ah, very, very ah, funny. Ah. <laughs> That's how I show pleasure. Get out. <laughs> for me, the best tool is foreplay and getting someone into the mood. So for me, like texting and, and just being able to talk back and forth, but get inside of their head in a really good way, really get someone into that headspace. Do you agree? Hello? I totally agree. Hello? <laughs> totally agree Hello? with you, puppy. Oh, there you're, you are. You're so right. You're always right. And let's say you can't get them in the headspace. Maybe the dynamic's a little off. The next question from Kay Polo asks, have you ever had a sub have a fully blown panic attack mid bondage scene? Yeah, and that is common with 
people who are new to bondage, especially if it's a new experience with someone new you're playing with, and the second you feel some discomfort, you start to panic. Have, have you tried not hitting them too hard with reality? No, 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 no. <laughs> I hit them with a crop. <laughs> I don't hit them with reality. <laughs> I hit them with fantasy. <laughs> but if they panic before we get to the fantasy, all you can do is untie them and reassure them. And maybe play some good atmospheric music. That will help bring them down. And let's say you take a left instead of a right. Well, you just have to reroute and find what works for them to get them back into that headspace. For some people, it might be music. For some people, it might be lighting a candle or just maybe just like soft caressing. Like ask them within that negotiation part, what gets them back or what they really like that gets them into the mood slash headspace. And that might help salvage a scene. I had a sub once who was so scared to begin with getting in the bondage, but they were also excited. And as soon as I had them in it, I just started massaging them and making them feel comfortable. And that boner came right back. And finally, when doing bondage, always have safety shears. Where do you keep pulling things from? I'm a top. Usually you pull things out of the bottom, but you know, whatever, whatever you, you say, whatever you say. We can try that. No, 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 Grab no, no. Little and to avoid panic attacks, this is actually a very good segue as well. You guys are asking great questions today. <laughs> Daddy Hog, Daddy Hog asks, "What are some good aftercare tips for coming out of the Dom headspace?" Ooh, that's a good one. And of course, aftercare is not only sexy but necessary. And usually, we only talk about it in the perspective of the sub because we think that the they're the only one that needs it, but doms need aftercare too. And that's what you do to bring someone down, to bring those endorphins down and make sure that you don't drop so heavily that you do have a panic attack or you exhaust too quickly. So for me, I take off all my gear. The gear comes off. Boots first, have, have the sub, take your boots off. Well, ha boots off. Puppies don't take boots off. Boots off! <laughs> and then I make food. Because you don't realize when you're doming and topping, you are focused on their safety, their enjoyment, the physicality of doing everything. You're sweating. You are exuding a lot of energy. So hydrate and get food afterwards, and you're just going to feel this comfort level come back to you while you have your give dom me, give bliss. Me, give me your, your dom bliss. Show, show me dom bliss. Go. Oh. <laughs> oh, I was expecting a bit more ohm, but that works too, I guess. Doms, they want, there's a little ego involved there, so they need a little stroking after, so it's always nice the next few days to check in with your dom as well and say, how are you doing? Did you enjoy that? How are you doing? Did you enjoy that? Don't, oh my God. <laughs> I'm not supposed to <laughs> inflict pain after aftercare. We have different types of aftercare. <laughs> so that tip, it might be just the tip, is make sure you clearly explain, hey, I need aftercare too, to a sub. Tell them how you like that aftercare. And if they're able to do it for you, great. If they're not, maybe you need to negotiate a different kind of scene. When you're both in that blissful state, rubbing the dom's feet could go a long way. I mean, I can't, I'll just, I'll just rub your, no, you rub my feet. Rub wait, my, wait, what? Rub my feet. Here, I'll just... No! Oh yeah. I'm yeah. I'm yeah. Are is you, this allowed? Are I don't know if this is allowed on YouTube. <laughs> Someone's adding that to Wiki Feet. Wiki Feet. <laughs> Have you not heard of Wiki Feet? No, is that oh, a thing? Oh, that's a thing. Oh God. And then the final two questions kind of go hand in hand, and I want to I want to read them both because I really I appreciate the juxtaposition of the questions because we're talking about doms for once. And the first one from Troy asks, does it ever feel like you're doing all the work? Yes. <laughs> Let me ask you the question. <laughs> Followed up by Storm who asks, does it ever get tiring to have to be in charge and come up with all the ideas as a dom? Also yes. <laughs> It's exhausting. People don't realize trying to keep it together all the time is exhausting. Another reason blindfolds come in very handy. Because <laughs> when your sub is blindfolded, they can't see you going, oh my God, where did I put that rope? Where did it? Oh my God, what am I, I doing still next? Hear you. What am I doing next? I can next? still hear you. Shh. Going oh no, what's happening? Ah! Yeah, you like that, don't you, boy? I mean, oh. Yeah, you like it, don't you? Oh. Yeah, you like it, don't you? Ah. But yes, Troy and Storm, it is a lot of work and that's why doms need aftercare as well. But I wanna also flip that question on its head and say that you can also delegate things to the sub. If you don't wanna make the decisions, make them think that you're making the decisions by making them make the decisions. Oh, I do that to you all the time. Speak for yourself. <laughs> 
No, but like use that as the foreplay. Be, be, be sexy, be dominant, but be like, and then what am I gonna do to you, huh? Like <laughs> make, make, it, make it something that they get to help steer and then you can add your own little twist, but that gets a lot of that work and that brainstorming off of you and helps to make the scene go probably better in the long run. So what do you think I'm gonna do to you next? I think you're gonna edit this entire video <laughs> and, and then schedule uh, my next haircut and then uh, take me to the gym. That sounds hot. And that then buy me exactly some like video equipment. That sounds exactly like what I would want to do. Yeah, that's what you want to do, isn't it? Nope. That's where you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you don't have to be the Dom 24-7. Doms like the sub too. And I think that that needs to be said before we end this video because we think that Doms are always just in that one single mode. It's not binary, it's not zero or one. You can exist in between as a sub that likes to Dom, a Dom that likes to sub, or maybe just a Switch who likes to be versatile at all times. And this will confuse the old guard players a little bit, but things have changed. And also, I like learn a lot of my doming skills from subbing. I can feel something that someone does to me and I'm like, ooh, I'm adding that to my bag of tricks. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> and we learn things constantly. While we might be sex experts, where we're talking about our experiences because we have arguably far too many of them, Excuse me, you, uh, we are always learning as well. So this is just kind of a, an entry level to the conversation and hopefully something that teaches not only subs, but also other doms how to be better doms. There is no textbook. Well, I mean, actually there's a, there's, there's, a, there's few. a few textbooks, <laughs> but there is no one textbook that covers everything to domination or even submission. So that's where you guys come to play and ask these amazing questions that start the conversation. That's why I really like these ask a blank anything because it, it ventures into areas that we've not covered because we've not ever asked ourselves, how does a dom meet other and have other dom friends, you know? And remember that everyone is different and every relationship dynamic is completely di different. So if you're trying to judge yours based on somebody else's and trying to mimic what they do, it's not gonna completely work. You need to find what works for the two of you and get you both off. Or doesn't. Chastity exists. Chastity. Yeah. And everyone's different and Helix knows that. That's why. <laughs> So if you guys have more questions, Daddy, where can they ask those? Leave them in the comments below. And what happens if they don't? You will be severely punished. And what happens if they do? You will be severely rewarded. Don't forget to ring that bell because if they don't, you will be severely punished. Okay, well, I mean, sometimes you gotta just go with the same narrative regardless of how they react. <laughs> Doms are repetitive. <laughs> and whether you're the Dom or the sub, always have a safe word. And today's safe word is? What do you think my safe word should be, boy? Oh God. I don't know, what do you want it to be, daddy? <laughs> I hate with, oh, it's like us trying to decide on what food to get. Oh my God. Oh my God. Do you want Chinese? No, I had it for lunch. And today's safe word is. Oh my God. 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 And don't forget to subscribe to What's a Safe Word and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. My turn. No, my never turn. your turn. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. Don't you think you want to give it to me though? No, that, you're not gonna Tom Sawyer me into this. There's a spider right above you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> this is why my trust issues are going down. <laughs> my trust issues are down now. <laughs> you are so handsome. You look so nice in your leather shirt. Thank you for dressing up today. That's better. Where's your Fine. foot? Ah! <laughs> you better cut. You you better cut. Ugh. Camera, you better cut. I'm gonna I'm gonna dom you. Oh, watch my James. Oh, you oh, yeah, you naughty little camera. Oh yeah, you think you're gonna get a high ISO? Oh yeah, that F stop better stop.